Hello everyone. Welcome to MSFT webcast. In this video guide, we will install and configure DFS namespace in Windows Server 2019. Distributed file system allows us to set up shared folders hosted on different servers into one or more logically structured namespace. Each namespace appears to use us as a single share folder with a series of subfolders created as a shortcut links. For testing purpose of DFS namespace configuration, we have two Windows Server 2019 virtual machines in our test lab created in VirtualBox. The first virtual machine is our domain controller with the host name ws2k19-dc01. This is the root domain controller for mylab.local domain. This is our member server. This server is a part of our Active Directory domain mylab.local. And on this server, already I have logged in as a domain admin. On this server, we are going to install and configure DFS namespace. So let's install DFS namespace role on our member server first. To do that, we need to click on manage. And then after, we need to select add rules and features. On before you begin screen, we simply need to click on next button. On select installation type, we need to click on next button. Our local server is already selected ws2k19-srv01.mylab.local. Let's click on next to continue. On select server rules, we need to expand file and storage services. Then we need to expand file and iSCSI services. We need to install file server rule first. But if you select DFS namespace, that is going to add file server rule as well. So let's select DFS namespace. It will ask us to add certain features that are required by DFS namespace. And in that, as you can see, file server is also listed. Let's click on add features to add those features as well. Now you can verify file server is also selected. Let's click on next to continue. If you want to install any additional features over this server rule, you can install it from this console. But we don't need to install any additional features and that's why I'm going to click on next to continue. Let's click on install button to start the installation process. As you can see installation has been completed successfully. Let's click on close to close this console. Okay, the file server and the DFS server rule has been successfully installed. Now it's time to configure DFS namespace on this server. And to do that, we need to open DFS management console. That we can open by clicking on tools on server manager and then after clicking on DFS management. That will open DFS management console. On DFS management console, let's click on namespaces. And here you can see we don't have any item right now in our DFS management. So let's create a new DFS namespace. To do that, we need to right click on namespaces and then select new namespace. Here it is asking us to specify the server name that we want to use as a namespace host. Let's click on browse to browse that server. Let's click on advance and click on find now. We're going to select ws2k19-srv02. Let's click on OK and let's click on Next. On this console, it is asking us to specify the namespace name. For this demonstration, we are going to specify name store. Here you can specify the name whatever you want to set up. Let's click on added settings to modify the permission as well. Now here you can see the local path of the share folder will be c colon slash dfs roots slash store. If you want to change the location, you can change it from here. But as we are going for the testing purpose, and that's why I'm not going to change the default location. Now here we have a shared permission, which is going to apply on our store folder. And we're going to use all users have a read only permissions. If you want, you can assign uh, this permission. Administrators have full access and other users have read only permission. But we are not going to do that. We are going to use the permission all users have read only permissions. Because I don't want that any other users can create folder under store folder. Let's click on OK. Click on Next. 
on this console we have a options to select the type of main space which we want to create we are using active directory domain environment and that's why i want to use domain base namespace if you want you can also go with a stand alone namespace we'll go with domain base namespace and then let's click on next to continue on this console we can verify the settings which we have selected for our namespace like namespace name namespace type and the server which is going to host our dfs namespace let's click on create to create a namespace with current settings and that's it green checkbox that means we have successfully completed the new namespace wizard let's click on close to close this console Let's expand namespaces and here you can verify our namespace is there with the name uncpath pylab.local slash store. Let's right click on it and go over the properties. I'm going to copy this path. And now let's try to access this namespace using the UNC path. Let's press Windows R key. I'm going to paste that path which we have copied and let's click on OK. Right now, as you can see, it is totally empty because we haven't added any shared folder under store. Let's minimize it. I'm going to open File Explorer as well. Let's open C drive. Under C drive, you can verify one folder is there with the name DFS Roots. Let's double click on it. Under we have a store folder. Let's see the permission of the store folder. Click on sharing. As you can see, this folder is shared. If we click on advanced sharing permission, here you can verify that everyone has a read-only permission. Let's click on security and here you can see default permission is there. Fine. Let's click on close. Let's double click on store folder and it is totally empty. Now let's minimize it. So we have successfully created DFS namespace with the name store. Now it's time to add shared folders to the DFS namespace. For this demo, Already I have created some users on our domain controller. Let's verify that user accounts. Under Active Directory Users and Computers, we can see I have created one OU with the name TasteOU and under that OU I have created two users, TasteUser1 and TasteUser2. And we have one group with the name TasteUsers. Both users are a member of this TasteUsers group. Fine. Let's go to server manager on our member server. Let's click on file and storage services. Because manually I'm going to create a share folder. Let's click on task and select new share. Here I'm going to select SMB share quick group file. Let's click on next. I'm going to select type a custom path. Click on browse and we're going to store that folder on our E drive. Select new folder. Here I'm giving name taste users data. Select the folder so a local path will be e colon slash taste users data. Click on next. This will be our share name and this is the our remote path. Click on next. I'm going to enable access based enumeration. Click on next. I'm going to customize the permission. Disable inheritance. Convert inherited permission into explicit permission. I'm going to remove both entries for users. Let's click on add to add a new entry. Select principal and that is going to be our group taste users. Let's click on check names and click on OK. Permission will be allowed but the permission will be only applicable to this folder only. Let's click on show advanced permissions and give them permission to create a folder and append data. Fine. Click on apply and click on OK. Let's click on next and click on create to create the share folder. Fine. Our share folder has been created successfully. Let's click on close. Let's click on this PC. Let's verify the share folder. And for the testing purpose, I'm going to create one text file here. Fine, I'm going to close this and let's save the file. Okay, fine, so we have a one test file under that test users data folder. 
Okay, let's minimize this. Now we are going to add that folder under our DFS namespace. Let's right click here and select new folder. Here you can specify the name and it is not necessary that you have to specify the same name as your share folder. You can assign any name of your choice. For this demonstration, I'm going to give name taste data. Let's click on add to add folder targets. That means the actual path of that share folder. Click on browse. And this is the folder which we have created taste users data. Now for this demonstration, we are creating a share folder on our local server. But suppose if you have a share folder on other server, that time you can also define that share folder here. For this demonstration, I'm going to select taste users data folder and click on OK. Click on OK again. That means if user access UNC path mylodot local slash store slash taste data, that time exactly in a background user is accessing this path UNC path WS2K19 SRV02 slash taste users data folder. If you want to add Another folder target, you can add that by clicking on the add button again. Fine, that's even okay. And that's it. Now we have successfully added that shared folder as well. Now let's go to that shared folder that we have access using UNC paths. Now you can see one shortcut is there. But if we double click on this taste data, that time we can redirect to that shared folder which we have created. Here you can verify that same taste file is there. Fine. I also want to show you that how we can create a shared folder using DFS management console as well. Let's again select our DFS namespace, right click on it and select new folder. Here I am giving name taste share one. Let's click on add to add folder target. Click on browse. Now this time we don't have existing share folder. So we want to create a new shared folder and that time we need to click on this new shared folder. It will ask you the name of the share folder. Here I'm giving name share one and here we need to specify the local path of that shared folder. So let's click on browse and which is I'm going to store under E drive. Let's make a new folder. The name share one and click on OK. So basically we are sharing a folder which we have created on our local path, which is e colon slash share one, our share name will be share one. Now from this console, we can assign the permission. Let me assign the permission like administrator have a full access and other users have a read and write permission. If you want, you can assign a permission from this console as well. Fine. Let's click on OK. Now we have that share folder as well. Let's click on OK. Click on OK. And click on OK again. So now here we can verify that our second folder is also available under our DFS namespace. Let's check the same thing. This is the UNC path which we have access. And now you can verify that a taste share one is also there. If we create any file or folder under this share that will be also available under our local path. Fine. So now user can access all the share folders which you have in your domain environment using single location and that is the UNC path mylodot local slash store. It is our DFS namespace. That's it for this video demonstration. Thank you all for watching this video. In the next video demonstration, we are going to see that how we can configure DFS namespace replication in Windows Server 2019.